Danish, both of us, we've grown up with a design tradition that we have, at least I think, taken for granted in many ways. Do you think that because in Denmark we have such a strong design tradition that we have something special, a special approach towards design being Danes? Well, we are in many ways uh, surrounded by good design. Homes, schools, public institutions, urban space, everything. And at the same time, since we have been used to this kind of refinement, you can even say, and I think that's why when we have international visitors in Denmark, they are sort of overwhelmed when they look at the design tradition in Denmark and they consider it to be rich and in many ways outstanding. And we're just, oh, is that something special? Which is kind of naive, but yeah, it's in our DNA. It's embedded you can even in say, our DNA, so yeah. to speak, yeah. And we have, of course, a lot of names running through our heads when we talk about Danish designers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let me pick on just one, Arne Jacobsen, yeah. uh, who is, of course, known worldwide for a very, very broad design legacy. One of the things that he did was he designed not only items, he designed like whole spaces where everything has yeah. been touched by his hand. Which we call a Gesamtkunstwerk, something where everything is working together and where you really create this kind of uh, ambience. It's also to have this kind of openness to the quality of design. You know that the devil is in the detailers and you have this idea of nothing is too small to draw uh, attention from uh, the designer or the architect. But he was absolutely extraordinary when it comes to that. When he designed things, he started with the door handle and then you enter the building and then everything, it goes the whole way through. You do the wallpaper, you do the carpets, you do the furniture. He even go into the kitchen and design the cutlery. Uh, wonderful taps, uh, also designed many, many decades ago. Extremely modern. <laughs> Extremely modern. And when you tell people that they are actually uh, quite old, they are just, no, stop, you're kidding, because it doesn't look like that. And it gives you this uh, very unique experience when you are in such an Arne Jacobsen space because this is just so, well, today we say there's a holistic approach and you really stage and frame life through design and architecture. Living in a house that has been designed by Arne Jacobsen, I know that feeling you very do. well. Yes. Because somebody has reflected on your needs, on your behalf, yeah. and it actually works even 80 years after it was designed. Yeah because it was done in an intelligent way and also it had a universal approach, which means that it, it actually fits a lot of people and not just one person. When we talk about Danish design, we are always referring to the golden age of Danish design. I think it was an intention to give the good life to the Danes, because also in my perspective, Danish design has to do with the good life. It was a priority from government and municipalities that you should actually invest heavily in good design. So we had this wonderful design implemented and uh, that was a very good beginning because that was a common platform. It was for everyone. And from that point, then the development of Danish design and this kind of very refined and good and solid tradition, it took its starting point. It is a recognition of the people's need at a very basic level. It's also a very um, equal condition for everyone, giving uh, each and single citizen the opportunity to fulfill a meaningful life. You talk about design as a tool of creating a society specific for the golden age, or is that the way we still approach design in Denmark? I think in the 21st century, we have had a new take on design where we have the golden age and then icons and classics and what will the future tell and show and need. And then suddenly there came this new awareness. You had this focus on how can we reshape society through design? How can we uh, sort of tackle the grand global uh, challenges through design? So that I will uh, claim it became sort of a new uh, golden age for not just Danish design, but uh, design in, at large. For many years, Denmark has been uh, regarded as one of the uh, countries where people feel most happy. Mm. Do you think that's also uh, because of our tradition of using design, maybe also using democratic design, that it's something that's available for a lot of us? Mm. Do you think that has an impact on our uh, level of happiness? We have quite a tradition in Denmark, a legacy for the good design for everyone. And now you mentioned democratic design and uh, accessible, universal, inclusive design, you can also name it. I think the reason why we in Denmark have such a thing as uh, regarding design to be for everyone, it's because of our cultural values. We also have this embracing inclusive 
design, which makes us happy. I think you can also say that a way of measuring whether the design actually works is, are people happy? Do they use it? Do we find lots of people in the public spaces where design has been implemented? And walking around in Copenhagen, my answer would be yes. We have a lot of good examples on public spaces where design has been a tool and has now been almost taken over by the citizens, which is, I think, the best thing that could ever happen. You can say that design has uh, the ability to stage lives, which is, of course, an enormous responsibility. I think being historians, both of us, we know for a fact that it works. It definitely. <laughs> and, and, and that alone is a reason why we should always emphasize yeah. the use of good design and good designers. and. We are very happy to live in a country where we have good design educations. Yeah, it is. And one of the things they are doing is that they are actually looking back at the students and get inspiration from history. And that's very important, not just to have this uh, accelerating development where you want to find out new and produce new and new things, but you also say, what have we learned from history? How can we go back and become even better? Mm -hmm.